shout at you. Who you deal with? Hello, everyone. On behalf of Casey Noblet and the Commercial Dance Intensive, I would like to thank you for joining us. My name is Melissa Strain, and I am the Director of Operations for CDI, and today I will be your host. We are so excited to share our behind the scenes interview starring Carmeet and the creative team of the upcoming music video, Questions. go around and do some brief introductions. Hi, I'm Cassidy Noblet. I am a creative director, concept designer, choreographer, mixture, a little bit of everything. Hi, I'm Joanna Numata, and I'm a dreamer and developer on this project. Hi, I'm Victor Rojas. I'm part of the dreamer and developer team. Hi, what's up, everybody? My name is Brian Thomas, and I am the director slash editor. Hey everybody, and I'm Carmi, and I'm the artist for this project. Thank you, CDI, for all your contribution. It was an incredible experience. Amazing. Carmi, I'd love to ask you a few questions to get started. Would you like to talk a little bit about your background and what led to your career as an artist? Word on the street is that you have an extensive relationship with dance and choreography. It's been a while, yes. I'm, I'm grateful to have had such an incredible uh, career as a dancer and I did choreography as well before I became an artist on my own. Um, and it's been collective, you know, every experience we have leads us to the next thing. So I'm grateful for all my experience prior to becoming an artist because I feel like it was a foundation for uh, success, really. Amazing. Carmi, what's it like to have the life of a pop star? <laughs> it's not what people think it is, but some of it is. Some of it is fantastic and looks super glamorous. And ultimately for me, I love performing. I love being on stage. I love exchanging energy with the audience. I love reaching millions of people, connecting with them. Um, but there's also, there's a lot of work that goes into it, especially uh, like with the dolls, we rehearse a lot. As you know, every little detail is sussed out. It's not just like fly by the wind. So um, down to the costumes, down to the choreography. I mean, it's to the point where when you go on stage, you can let go of all that and let the magic take over in your performance. But um, it's everything is in, in sync so that it always, comes across the right way. Um, but there's a lot of also other things. There's the business end of, of the industry. There is an aspect of the industry that people, I don't, I don't wanna put any kind of damper on anybody's experience, but it's not all glitz and glamor. Let's just put it like that. The reality is there's a game to it. It's like marketing, it's the, you know, branding yourself, it's that other side of things as well. So you have to be willing to put yourself out there, put yourself on. And even for me, I, I think I come from the era of, you know, Prince days where it's like, there's a little something to the mystery of an artist. And now it's just so super transparent. You have to put yourself out there on social media. You have to stay engaged with your fans. You have to do a lot more work than just the creative side of things. I am grateful and honored to have had a long successful career and to still be relevant in this day and age, but it takes work. Certainly, that's so well said. I think it is incredible how you talk about being so multifaceted. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work these days. I mean, and for me, like the new generation, they move so fast and they, they're quick to record and post everything. And we were in the days of we were experiencing it, we were doing it. So I've had to morph and balance the two. <laughs> Absolutely. Carmi, will you talk uh, briefly about how you and Cassidy initially crossed paths? You know, honestly, Cassidy, you're going to have to fill in because mine's a little blurry. We've known each other for a long time, obviously, but the pinpoint moment, please tell me you remember. Well, I remember meeting you uh, when 
well, there was a passing in during the filming of Pussycat Dolls, the show, when you guys yes. were doing the show. But yes. before then, because I, I had danced with Nicole and our paths crossed there as well. Okay. There's, well, there's, listen, I've been a fan, so I've run into Carmine many a time when she was hanging <laughs> with Ryan Friedman and everybody. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the group. Um, oh. I like them. So we've met, you know, we met on the Pussycat Doll show. We met at um, uh, a little when I was with N Nicole. But I think mainly too, when we kind of got to like sit and chat was when we were working with Sean and you came in to do that. And that's when I kind of got to be like, okay yes. now i'm in the room with you like just you two on your own as opposed yes. to everybody else and i knew the minute that we actually got to interact and you were working with sean and i saw i was like i need to work with cassidy like i knew it right off the bat i mean that's something to be said because in this industry you know you're going to come across a lot of different types but at the end of the day you really see the people that you want to gravitate towards and the people you want to work with are the people like Cassidy who have integrity, are of his word, they're passionate, they are, you know, they work with intention and that speaks volumes. And that's the kind of thing that lasts in this industry too. So um, immediately, like when we decided to do something, he was just, he's on it. And I love that. It's like, there's follow through because a lot of people just, you know, talk. So I think for us as dancers, choreographers, anybody that has been aware of the presence of someone who does greatness, you're like, I have to be at my best version to make sure that I don't let this person down. But I also get to express myself in my um, highest vibration. And hopefully that will be enough to, you know, uh, support and engage the person you want. But you're like that all the time anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to ask you guys to elaborate a little bit about the track itself and what brought you to the video concept. So Carmi, if you want to start on this one and then I will bring in Cassidy. The team and Cassidy presented the opportunity to create a visual and a video. He asked me, you know, what, what music I had that we could potentially do this to and that we were going to shoot on the beach in Santa Barbara. And I'm like, nothing I have right in this moment lends itself to like a beach shoot, you know? So we started thinking maybe we could just, I could just do a cover of something. And the first suggestion that Cassidy had was questions. And I was like, that's a great idea. Gosh <laughs> darn it. Like, I literally was like, it just was like so easy the way it happened. But at this point it was probably <laughs> like weeks before the shoot <laughs> it all happened so fast and granted this was 2019 i mean like it's crazy how fast this time has been flying but um i literally went in with a good friend of mine sata this incredible artist and he produces and and we i think we just finished the track like less than a week before we went in to shoot it and it all came together so beautifully and it was great working with everybody. Everybody, everybody here, everybody's contribution was just incredible. You know, it's interesting too, is for us as we were kind of uh, thumbing through, you know, the catalog of what music she had and stuff. It was also important for us to find something that she wanted to stand behind and represent herself. Something that was feeling like, oh, this is this is a current thing. And what we liked about it, I think, when we were throwing, is that I was pitching ideas of boy songs. So that I think a really great thing is when you hear the opposite sex do a version of, of someone else's song because it, it automatically takes it to a whole new place. And so we were listening to Chris Brown's you know, questions and she kind of latched onto it. I was like, yes, I love this song. I'm super excited. And now I'm excited to see what she does with it. So you know, as, as she started to produce it and started to record it and was sending us um, bits and pieces of it, I was like, oh. This is good. I'm going to play this on repeat in my house just for me. So <laughs> uh, it's fun. It was fun. Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. It's such an affirmative process when there's that collaboration between the two of you and the team and to just have a continual, yes, this works. Yes, this is great. Yes, let's run with it. That kind of energy is so great. Cassie, since I have you up, um, yeah. I'd love to ask you, it's kind of a tricky question, but what's the pressure like 
to work with such an established artist like Carmeet? Can you talk about, you know, the quality you wish to put forth or, you know, working with a budget or like what kind of expectations you have on yourself and the project? You know, what's that like for you as a creator? Immediately, I'm filled with excitement. To follow that is, if I'm not doing my absolute best, there's a possibility that I'm gonna let someone down, whether it's myself, whether it's the artist I'm working with, whether it's the director or whether it's just the creative team. So the interesting thing though, is the pressure isn't dampening. The pressure is actually really positive and exciting. It's like, what can I do better in order to create this vision? What more can I do to this choreography to let us hear the music in a certain way? You know, um, I think overall, when I first start, when I get excited with an idea, the, the things just start pouring out of my head and my imagination. And the reason some of the pressure is gone is because of my team. And when I say my team, like our team, uh, you know, Victor, Joanna, Brian, my sister, Melissa, you know, Carmi, all of the people that were a part of this shoot, I'm able to start bouncing ideas off with them and talking with them and kind of um, formulating the imagination into some solid reality. And with that, the great thing about having a team is that they're able to say, yeah, no, seen this, haven't seen this, possibly, and we're able to shift. And because we've also worked together now, um, we're also able to say, we've done that before, let's not do it. Oh, great, we haven't, we haven't entered into this realm. And um, I think mainly for me, I really do care about what people think of me. I think there's a part of me that loves my expression and I'm learning to stand on my own as like, this is my art, this is what I'm putting into it and it's satisfying for me. But when I work on a project that has more people involved, of course I care what they think about the project, uh, the product, the process, and more so it's the process for me. The pressure comes in is that I wanna make sure that it is a memorable experience for all parties involved from top to bottom. And uh, so working with someone that not only have I looked up to or, or, you know, been aware of their presence in the industry, but then you also understand the magnitude, like, you know, this isn't just a dancer and a choreographer. This is a global celebrity who's here. And the one thing I want to do is make sure that the experience for Carmi is that she's happy to be there, that it doesn't feel like a waste of her time. And that while she's, you know, a part of it, and, and then after it's done, that she can say, yeah, that was worth my time and energy, and I'm happy to be there. So that's kind of where the pressure falls. I was going to say, um, I think the the pressure is definitely higher for you know for an established artist. I think there's a um, there's a level of responsibility. I think you know because Carmi is an established artist, and um, uh, that's boom. And then on top of that, I think we all sort of have a small personal relationship with her and that I think also takes precedence you know what I mean like not impressing but sort of being there for somebody you respect you know on, on a sort of on a personal level so this was a much easier process too because you know her level of professionalism is beyond do you know what I mean so it was really easy to work with somebody of her establishment and uh yeah. Oh, I love you guys too. Uh, love and respect yeah. you guys all. Yeah. So I was gonna say one thing that's really important, I think that Victor was kind of hitting on is is too is the organization of this product, meaning that the pressure comes in to making sure that we have all of our stuff together from top to bottom because we've all been through the experience of what it takes not only now to uh, plan for the video, get everything in line prior to the video, costumes, props. Uh, location, we have to be so organized to make sure that this flows smoothly. We have to make sure that our organization is on point so that we don't waste any time, especially when you're working with uh, an artist of this caliber, because um, if we don't have our stuff together, then it makes, uh, it makes the process much slower and less professional, I think. I have to mention that it's incredible how efficient it has become with this specific group of creators and collaborators. I think that you are such a strong leader, Cassidy. 
And I think that it's just so wonderful to see everyone's strengths. And this actually brings me to my next question. Um, this I'm going to point to Victor and Joanna. Um, as crucial parts of dreamers and developers, where do you feel your individual expertise shines? Um, well, I mean, I think as being a part of the dreamer and developer team, I I, I feel like it's, I'm a good sounding board, but then on my own, I feel like I'm strong as a choreographer, or as a dancer, you know, so having all these experiences in different um, areas is always helpful. And then I think, you know, uh, on a personality level, um, I feel like my ego doesn't get in the way. Um, and I think that's a big thing about this team in particular is that we are all willing to you know, do what, do whatever it takes. You need me to fan something great. I'm there. You want me to, um, you know, hold a light over here. Sure. You want me to do an eight count for sure. I'll be there. You know? So I feel like we're all great at hopping in and just making, making the dream work, you know? Absolutely. I want to ask you a specific question, something you alluded to a second ago, you know, as a choreographer, when you're watching another female move, do you find it's an asset to understand the feminine perspective since you know like you're such a strong female on this team and you know the artist happens to be female do you find that you provide a unique perspective um yeah for sure you know i think the understanding that comes from shared experiences or perspectives is always going to be beneficial um you know it helps you connect and or communicate um and it, it allows you to do that on more of a familiar level Love it. I'm going to jump over to Victor. Hey, hey. Hi. Um, okay, so yeah, I think uh, personally, I guess my personal experience, um, why it's, I guess, valuable to this production or to the team, really, I, would, I don't think I would normally say something like this, but I, I feel like I operate, uh, you know, professionally at, at, at the highest level. You know what I mean? I um, I've had a lot of experiences and, and experiences with, with a lot of experienced people as well, right? From directors to artists, to dancers, to choreographers. So I personally have a lot of information on what is, um, I think, valuable and what is um, visual and what is subject to opinion, but what, what's good, right? Um, so I think that's part of the magic about sort of specifically the dreamer and developer team professionally on our own operate at the highest level, right? Um, so when you're able to connect with other people who are on the same vibration of that, you know, communication, it's, um, it's valuable period. And then just being with people who like, uh, like Joanna said, she's a great sort of soundboard, right? I think that's what's magical about this this dreamer and developer team. We're we're really able to be a board and not necessarily be a department. Do you know what I mean? Like we we can really throw a dart at any of us, and it's like we got it. Boom! You hit center. <laughs> fine. You know what I mean? There's such an air of willingness when it comes to this team everyone there's such a lack of ego and I think that it's impressive and very inspiring to be a part of this team and to watch how everyone no matter that task how large or how small it just needs to get done and there's always a great attitude about it and you know Carmi you know what's it like to have people in that realm where they're just willing to do anything I think, listen, I think we've all, coming up, you kind of, um, Shonique Sneed and I have a saying, she's one of my best friends, we call it rookie love. When you are like brand new on the scene and you're hungry, you want it, you say yes to everything, you do everything and you do anything. And then it's like, as you kind of, you know, get more experience, more jobs, people change. And we all know those, those people and those egos and the things that happen, it's like, when you lose that, you become a little like jaded and you're not as willing to put yourself out there or hold the fan or do anything. I've done all of that too for other people. Like it's 100% about supporting each other. So 
I don't, I don't play that game. Like anybody who knows me, I've always, I've been the same person, you know, I've always stayed humble. Um, and you should, your career is not going to always go like this. You know what I mean? At some point you're going to have a moment that's going to show you exactly some humility, you know, if anything, that's what this whole pandemic and, you know, um, everything that's happened that stopped us dead in our tracks is done. If you don't take a lesson from what has happened, then you're not growing, you're not ascending, we rise together. So it's like, this is a perfect example. You guys are a team, you work together and you make it happen for the better of the project. When we all thrive individually, we thrive harder together. It was great working with everybody because, I mean, as we know, you know, we were running back up and doing the thing. My, I don't know if you guys know either um, what happened with my makeup artist. She, on the way, drove up like early, early in the morning and got a flat tire. So she didn't right. end up getting there. And then, uh, remember, we had to figure out the hair situation last <laughs> minute, which I literally was freaking out about because it just... Things didn't work out the way I had planned it, you know, and, and it never does. So that's the whole, that's the whole deal, right? In life, um, you can't get married to a plan. You got to go with the flow and um, you guys collectively really made it happen. And it was wonderful. Just like even the lighting, remember, Brian, we were like, we we're going to shoot it this way. And we're like, okay, we don't have the light. We're going to have to flip the whole thing <laughs> with wherever it goes and, and be workable. That's, that's the name of the game. Yeah, wow. Um, being a director, I think, well, I know I'm responsible for the end picture, what it looks like. Because it's always gonna come down most of the time on the director. So I have to make sure the artist is happy and I have to make sure it looks good. So I'm so counting on the team to make that happen. So when the sun was moving, we didn't have any additional lights, I'm like, Oh my God, this, this is terrible. It's directly overhead. It's going to be shadowy. We got to switch everything. Cash is like, yeah, but I like this. I'm like, no, we got to move this. And he goes, oh, <laughs> now I see. I'm like, yes, because it's about what Carmi looks like at the end of this. So that's where schooling and all this stuff helps. So I think my specialty is uh, connecting with the artist and making sure the artist feels comfortable, which I know, I mean, Carmi's a pro. We all started as dancers. She was so amazing. I didn't really have to give her much direction besides tell her where the sun was. You know what I mean? Cause she's focusing on the camera, like chin up, do this, do that. It's like, okay, okay. So she could, you know, focus on the choreography and singing and stuff. So I think my biggest thing is making sure that I connect with the artist to make sure they're comfortable for whatever is going to be you know, on the film at the end. And just to, just to tag on that, I really didn't have to worry about anything because as everybody was saying, Victor Cassidy, Joanna, everybody is so on point. I mean, I could have gave Carmeet a light. <laughs> and everybody, <laughs> we all started as dancers. We all know how to do every role. And I think there's no one on this team that has lost that. Everybody's so humble. And it's just amazing because we, got, we count on each other and, and there's absolutely no ego whatsoever. I'm like, I was doing the DP work. So I'm like, Cassidy, you direct. And then I'll do this and then I'll go over here and wardrobe and paint on somebody and, you know, <laughs> it's great. It's great team, great teamwork. Can you talk about the dichotomy of working with people you know? Sometimes in our industry, we hear the phrase, people only hire their friends. You know, working with an established team can sometimes get a bad rap, but do you find that there's a freedom and a level of comfort when you have a team that understands you? Does it give you the creative green light, so to speak? Yes, I think the tools that I'm able to use, I'm actually not just me. When you work with people that you know, um, the tools that you're able to approach the task with is monumental and, and diverse and eclectic. And you can fill a table up with all of that. Um, when I know people, I think that they're able to translate my insanity as well as my imagination, but also able to fill in the questions that I may have. Uh, that's really important because sometimes we're not good at communicating what's here and bringing it out because sometimes it doesn't have that kind of form. And by having people that know you and having people that not only have the same skills, but even better skills around you, they're able to enhance and elevate the imagination. So it's kind of imperative. I, I think that also part of the process there's no learning process. There's no figuring out how do I talk to them? How do I tread lightly with them? 
Um, what is their give and take? What are their boundaries? You've gotten through the getting to know you part, which is a huge, a huge task when you're brought onto a project with new people and working with a team that you know, we kind of just get to go straight into the fun. Would you say that there's a benefit when it comes to communication, when your team has dance experience, music video experience, and everyone has, they, they're kind of like on the same page. Does that help you as a director, Brian? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I've been on so many, I mean, Cassidy's been with me on a lot and Joanna's been with me on a lot. When everybody's on the same page and you have a team like this, you got to hold tight and don't let them go because it's hard to find mm -hmm. this. It's extremely hard to find this. And, and it's, it's actually rare in the industry. I hate to say that, but it's true. You don't get to choose who you get to work with all the time. You're going to be thrown into a project with a bunch of different people who you've never worked with. So it is rare and, and I don't take that for granted. And when you do find people that you love working with, you're just like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, I think one thing I'm coming to understand about this group too is when these projects are happening and we're actually shooting, everyone is present. And I say that like an emphasis on the word present. I think when we approach this project that way, you can tell that people are adaptable. That's why ego doesn't come into play. That's why we can say, this is what we had envisioned, but this is what we are encountering. And you can tell by the energy, by how people um, approach the obstacle, if they are quick to respond, if they're, you know, great, I'll do this. How about you do this to this? It just shows that, this team is full of artists who live in the present moment. And I think that really leads to our success because sometimes you fight when you are not adaptable. So I think that's just a really great strength that we all have as a team. Yes, Cassidy. Um, speaking of adaptability, I have a oh. question for you. <laughs> um, can you talk about being on set and the reality of creating a world and then having to uproot it and shift and pivot turn and kickball change into a new world because there are some things in the outside environment that you just can't control. How do you navigate things okay. like that? Well, specifically, we got up real early and made it down to the beach like two hours, two and a half hours early before everybody was supposed to be there. Me, Joanna, Victor, Brandon, Brian, everybody. And we were building this like arena of metal poles. I was trying to make this like Coliseum situation, this powerful thing. And I mean, we did this foot and foot and foot and foot. It was, you. I mean, an architect would have been proud. The moment we get out there, great. The sun is different from when we started to when we were getting ready to shoot. So literally my heart was like, I was like, we have to move the whole thing. I'm like, do you know it took two hours to set that up? And he was like, yeah, but we have to do it now. So to tell every dancer, literally, grab a pole, lift it, walk a little circle this way and put it back down in less than two minutes. I'll tell you, I felt like I had prepared for an entire exam in history. And the next thing they know, they're like, all right, so we're going to bake a cake with um, eggs and flour. What? I was <laughs> livid inside. And I will tell you, thank God I have my team because in that moment, was I present? Absolutely not. I was angry. I was frustrated. And it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just the matter of the situation. And my team was like, we got it. We'll still make it work. And then I could rely on Brian because Brian being, you know, a dancer and choreographer prior to that, he was like, I can still make it work. I can still capture the vision. So it is the hardest thing is we always talk about fighting natural environments. When you work outside, you are not in control of the way the day goes. You are at the mercy of the way of the force majeure. So it is, adaptability is extremely important, but it also is a bit crushing when you have to, uh, I think when you have to sacrifice your work, but I also think there is a step that happens when you become married to something and then the little shift sometimes or the big shift isn't always understood by anybody else but yourself. So there's a detachment that has to happen. And that's when I lean on my team. And they're like, it still looks good. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. Okay. And they're like, it's fine. It looks, still looks good. And I'm like, okay. So 
<laughs> Wait, what about what about the mermaid situation where we <laughs> lost the light? Like, and then we're like, hurry, hurry, hurry! The last button's like. Mm. <laughs> I definitely want to talk about the mermaid. Um, why don't we jump to that real quick? So Carmi, what was your first thought when Cassidy told you he wanted to make mermaids out of sand, jewels, and chocolate? <laughs> I was like, chocolate? I mean, I get the sand. I mean, we all made sand mermaids on the beach before, but I was like, chocolate? Okay. Won't it melt? I mean, <laughs> but listen, Cassidy is so creative and I love, it's always great to go big and you can scale it down, right? You can go, this is realistic. This is what we could do, whatever, a budget, whatever it is, you can make it work, right? But it's better to like, I love that he dreams big and he's like, what do you think if <laughs> you're like, uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It was it was such a great turnout with everything, considering that we packed it all into, well, one day and then in an early cold morning. What went through I, your <laughs> mind when Cassidy asked you to get into the freezing cold ocean at six in the morning? I was nervous. I don't, I'm not a cold, I am a Cali girl, so I'm like such a wimp when it comes to cold water and it was cold. <laughs> I literally was like trembling. I was like, we're trying to do choreography, be smooth. <laughs> but but it was uh, it was such a beautiful picture and aesthetic, and I love that that's the way the whole thing ended. And and I and it was just that getting that one last shot and having a moment for that was really special. So um, it was a great way to yeah. end. Well, real quick, our first learning moment was we have to build these sand mermaids kind of immediately. Victor, Joanna, what do we do? We have to let them go change and get right back down. And we have to have all of these five sand mermaids ready to go. Well, that was a challenge in itself. Why? Because we had done, you know, one before, but now we have to figure out how to make them all look good, but they're not coming from the same person, right? So it's not Cassidy building five mermaid tails. It's like, team, make mermaids, just make it happen. Great, we need more color. I bought bags of chocolate. Blue chocolate, pink chocolate, yellow chocolate. Start decorating them. Start putting jewels on them. Just start. And don't trip. Don't trip. And don't step on it. <laughs> I'll let Victor and Joanna kind of finish up that conversation. They can talk about mermaids. I'll say about the mermaids. I, this may sound crazy, but I literally in my entire life have never even built a sandcastle. <laughs> like, like I've never like gone to the beach and like filled the bucket and like try to empty the bucket out and like try to keep the sand and like a formate like it's never had like I've, it's never even like I've never done that <laughs> but then some way somehow I'm down on literally hands and knees building a mermaid tail <laughs> like what am I doing and then I was, I'm li I was literally just copying whatever uh, Cassidy was doing Mine weren't great, but but they were <laughs> fixed. <laughs> they were fixed and it was great. I will I will say this though. For me, mermaids out of sand bejeweled with chocolate is quintessential Cassidy. Yes. <laughs> like, when he said that to me, I was like. I'm, I get it. I get it. I understand it. I don't know why, but I just, I just saw it. Like that is so something he would say, and then so something that he would produce and make happen. Mm -hmm. So once I saw him actually build the tail, I was like, "This is incredible!" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "This is incredible," which it inspired me to try to build mine. But, <laughs> but I, I totally understood sand mermaid tails with bejeweled with chocolate. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree with Victor. At first, you're like, okay, how's this, how's the chocolate? Okay, is it going to work, you know? And then, but the, I, I know, like, the, Cassidy's mind is just something else. And he's, again, like, so creative. And you're just, like, trying to imagine this world. Um, and I remember he took me down to the, to the sand, or to the beach. And um, he was like, you know, just like this. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> you know, and we're building, we're building the little tails. And I'm like, oh God, I think mine needs to be a little thinner. Okay. <laughs> and like trying to like pat it down, putting on the little chocolates and the jewels and stuff. And I, I can only imagine what we looked like from the outside. <laughs> it was definitely an experience and I loved every second of it. It felt a little frantic at the moment, you know, because we're trying to fight the sun and get things ready before the dancers and everybody is coming down. Um, 
But yeah, and I actually looked back at some of the behind the scenes stuff that I had on my phone um, and just like pictures and just, you know, videos and stuff. And I was just like, I love how it looked. And it was so creative and it, was, it just worked perfectly with our with our setting. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I will say one of the hardest, <laughs> sorry, one of the hardest parts about those tales was not only building them, but then we had to find, we had to build an Girl. entrance for the dancers to actually be able to sit in them. <laughs> so, so we actually build them and then we had to dig deeper than the actual sand tail so that the dancers could stick their legs in them. That, that to me was like, okay, this is like construction. Because if, <laughs> if, if you don't dig deep enough, the, the whole tails were just going, they were literally gonna implode. Implode? Oh yeah, they were gonna collapse. Blast. Yeah. So that, that to me was the challenge, like building sort of like making them wearable. <laughs> yeah, wearable sand tails. And then the next challenge was actually sitting in them and trying to do the choreography, like right. not moving right. the bottom half of your body. It was really weird because you're like stuck, kind of. <laughs> really that good. part was so cool though. The, the tails are like, that's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, me too. So hey, cool. Melissa, I'm having a flashback. This will be just a second because while they're building the mermaids, someone runs over because all my equipment was on the other side of the beach and the tide was coming up. Because I was right. talking to them. They're like, your, your camera's gonna like float away in the ocean. Come <laughs> up. I'm like, oh my God, we had to run back through the sand fleas that were attacking us oh. all the way over. Grab all my cameras. It was so close to the tide, just grabbing oh my, my camera and taking them out. Remember the tide? It's like getting stranded. So fast. Tide was getting close to the tails at one point. Yeah. yeah. Once the, the concept was there, wonderful. But then we had all these factors going against us. We're just watching the sun, you know, the, shat, the, the light go down and it's just creating more shadow, shadow, shadow. So we're having to <laughs> get this gap. Now we see the ocean deciding that it's going to try to eat us up and destroy <laughs> all of our work. And then halfway through the shoot, we're like, Oh my God, this section was only going to come to life with bubbles. Get the <laughs> bubbles. We get the bubbles and we start figuring out how to make it work. And then we're like, like <laughs> towards the end of it. And there's like one more shot that we need to get. And as soon as we go down to get it, the ocean comes up and takes our bubble plate with all the soap and just takes oh, it yeah. like. That was one of the videos that I watched on my phone before this. I was just like, oh my, we were all so frantic and running around and Cassidy were cursing as you were trying to get the bubbles to go. And uh, yeah, we were all a mess, but at least uh, they're, they're like, you see the little things floating around and people chasing them, and grabbing them, trying to, you know, wave the bubble wands in the air. It's a little. <laughs> the wind was so strong, we couldn't get bubbles out. Right. Yeah. That's right. So they just kept popping. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> but overall, like everything worked out and everybody pulled their weight and made it happen and it, it turned out beautiful. What was the editing process like for you? Can you talk a little bit about storyline versus visuals? And then also if you could touch on color and how that affects a video. Oh, editing. Editing is always a love-hate relationship. You get so excited, you get so into it but it takes a lot of time. Um, the process was do this much and then call Cassidy and see if he likes it and then do it again and then call Cassidy again. We basically co-edited. Cassidy was on the line with me. We did this online together, didn't we? Remember I came to your studio for two days? Cassidy actually with producing and choreograph, the way he structured everything, it was all in line to edit. So everything was just, Everything was there. Everything right on the lyrics was there. It was just about picking the best shots. So mm. this editing process, it usually takes a long time, but this wasn't as bad. It's a love-hate. I prefer directing because um, it's just, it takes a long time. And color, I actually, we hired the color out on this one. Colors, colors tricky because, you know, you have the blaring sun. Sometimes the skin tones change and you wanna keep them looking the best they can. Then you want the blues in the background looking more teal and, but you don't want it to cross over and then the saturation, there's just a lot. So I do color myself, but I prefer to have someone else do it because again, that takes too much time. 100%. Can you please talk about what goes through your mind when you see a shot that you want to incorporate, but you have to worry about your camera equipment, for example, 
when you ask Carmeet to kick the sand in this really slow-mo, beautiful motion, and then you realize that sand was gonna go straight into your beautiful, expensive camera lens, how, how do you navigate what you want to get from the shot and the reality of your equipment? I mean, I always just go for it. Equipment can be replaced, but the shot, I'm sorry, it's all about the shot. It's all about the art. And we'll always remember that sand flying at from that slow motion kick. On that note, will you talk about how when we shot in the morning, I wanted such a low shot that you ended up laying down in wet sand for me? <laughs> I love low angles. Everything just looks bigger. You see the sky and it was such a beautiful shot, but it looked pretty plain from where we were. And you know, the beach, it's kind of goes down like this. So I'm like, this looks terrible because they look so short and, and they're in the water. So I'm like, you know, you want to shoot low and make everyone look bigger. So I'm laying in, it's six o'clock in the morning and I am laying in the water, in the mud, all over just to get this low shot to make Cassidy happy. <laughs> I mean, it was worth it. The it shot is, I mean, it's magical. Cassidy, how do you lean on your team? in a way that is both respectful, but also cognizant of what you want to happen in the video? Easy, trust and vulnerability. So I give them the permission and the respect and the distance to be their professional, loving, expert gurus in their, in their lane. And then I'm also vulnerable with them in saying, help me, this is what I need, I am not, bigger than anyone else here. I'm on the same plane with you. So I trust in what you do. And I'm also going to show you where I need you. And if we can each fill in those um, empty spaces for one another, I think that we'll have a full product. What stands out as your favorite shot of the day? Oh, my favorite shot. Oh, my favorite shot. Okay. My favorite shot was the umbrellas, the red umbrellas. There's a moment and it, I was so mad because my uh, Ronin was jumping a little bit. So the focus was a little shaky and it was so bright in my monitor, I couldn't even see in my monitor. So I was basically going gorilla and just hoping we got the shot. And Cassidy knows what I'm talking about. There's this shot with Carmita, the very end of the umbrellas. She looks up and gives us like, like high fashion. She's looking out of the corner of her eye. She looks so beautiful. It's my favorite shot. Victor, what was your favorite shot of the day? Um, okay, there's a couple. Um, I really love the shot of her running away um, and then the bubble sort of crossing at some point. Um, that was kind of dark though, um, but it was it just looked really beautiful. And then all of the um, all of the mermaid stuff, I I just. I just think I just think it was so cool, and 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 I, honestly, for me, even though we were losing the lighting, that sort of like red sunset kind of vibe that it gave it mm. was really, really. It was just like beautiful. By legend, they're like these beautiful creatures, right? Um, so I just I think that lighting for me really helped that scene, but just the look of that, like the set, the, the little housing behind them with all the seaweed and the pearls hanging and then them actually being in the tails. I, I think that's some of my favorite stuff. Joanna, what was your favorite shot of the day? Um, I would agree with Victor. I think the mermaid section was my favorite um, just because it was so dreamy with you know the the light from nature and then also just the way it was set up um so that was definitely my favorite but then you know i i have a lot of favorites um mm -hmm. i also loved the last section in the water it was just so beautiful and then the section with the umbrellas was so bright and colorful i feel like every section had its own feel like the the umbrellas they were so like bright and like commercial looking um mm -hmm. and then the mermaids were more pastel -y, more natural. Um, and then of course the last shot in the water, I keep doing the arm, you know, um, <laughs> was just a beautiful shot too with the water. Cassidy, what was your favorite shot of the day? Uh, my favorite shot of the day actually was when I was kind of pushing this, uh, this final shot of the umbrellas where it was just six yellow umbrellas facing the ocean, hiding all the body except their legs. There was just something so artistic 
about it for me that it felt appropriate for what I wanted for the video, but that shot also felt like it could exist in its own world aside of this video. And I think that was very special to me. It's like one of those moments as we were capturing, I was like, I want this still or this boomerang situation in my house because I like that it encompasses um, the world that we're about to experience without giving it away. Hmm. Felt very pop art in the moment. Yeah, it, it felt, it felt, it just felt um, like a painting. Yes, that's a great way to say it. Me and Victor look at this painting, um, Magritte's painting on the hill of these people in a park and stuff. And there's just this kind of, it, it could go either way. It could go beautiful. It, it could be eerie. It depends on the music or the soundtrack you have to it, but there's just something so powerful about six yellow umbrellas standing facing the ocean. It's just, it, it has a thing to it. It was really ethereal. Mm, there you go, that's a great word. It just looked really like, like, I mean, not that we were going for this, but it just, it just felt really like Greek goddess, like in an oil painting. Mm. Mm. Like it, it, it was, it's just, I think, see now I think I want to change my favorite shot. <laughs> Because it, it, it really, I think like that last shot, now that I think about it, for me, that last shot kind of encompasses like art. Mm. It's just really like, it's art. It can be a painting, the way it was shot, the visual of it, the colors, you know, the, 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 the idea of it. I think it's, it's just like art in like a, in, in sight. You know what I mean? It's really, it's really beautiful that night. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change it. <laughs> I'm gonna <Yeah>. change it too. <laughs> it does, it encompasses who Cassidy is. We had so many young dancers stepping up to help in the high pressure moments. And we've talked a little bit as a team about how we all pitch in and make things happen or troubleshoot. I wanna know what actions stood out to you and what kind of, behavior makes you want to work with someone. So for example, if you were to work with these dancers again, what sorts of things would make you want to rehire them in the real world? Okay, um, that people follow directions and, and follow what the choreographer and what the people are telling them because sometimes they get into their own thing when they're performing. And if, like, for instance, we tell, I want just Carmeet to look at the camera Everybody else look to your front, but don't look in the camera. Just because mm -hmm. where I'm standing, it'll look weird if someone's crossing over and looking out of the corner of their eye for me. So sometimes I've had issues before in the past where dancers, they just continually do their own thing. And it's gonna destroy the shot, it's gonna destroy time, and it'll destroy my relationship with them to ever work with them again. Because <laughs> it's really about the team, it's about the project, it's not about you, it's about what the director sees behind the camera and you know, and what Cassidy said to do and what Joanna and Victor and we, we know what looks good. So trust us. So teamwork and listening and follow directions is very important. Especially with a team like this, there's no egos. We're doing it for the, for, for the good of the project, for the good of the video. There's no ego, there's no power play with us. It's about the end result. Okay, um, I would say instincts. Um, Instincts are a huge, I think, huge performance or performative quality. Um, um, you know, th there's the rehearsal process and then there's the performance process. But like to use for an example, like let's say in rehearsal, you we, we just walk, right? There's no set and you walk forward, so is the camera. Um, and then once we get on set, let's say there's a huge arch right, on set that you want to walk through. There should be an instinct that kicks in of walking through this arch. It's a different approach than just walking towards a camera, right? Because this mm. set now has brought the, the, the visual to a different life source, right? So when you walk towards a camera or when you walk through an archway, those two walks are completely different. And it's an instinctual 
um, quality that should kick in to understand that, wait, I'm walking under an arch. There's a different approach to that. And a lot of people don't understand that. They don't know how to connect to the set or connect to even, even the artist, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, instinctively, your performance should elevate if you're closer to the artist than not, right? Mm. You, you should still perform at a higher quality, but if you're close to an artist instinctively, you should know to kick it into higher gear, right? And, and a lot of people don't either have instincts or don't know how to use their instincts. So I think it's when, when an, a dancer uses their instincts, it's very, very noticeable. Um, mm. And that, that for me plays a big role on, on how I sort of gauge where you're at. And if, and if, even if we, you know, I would work with you again. Absolutely. That adaptability, I think yeah. is very clear when you know what it looks like and yeah. you having experience and so many on the team having experience in front of the camera and behind the camera, I think it's very clear for you to recognize that elevation that happens that you can see it so clearly, like they've got it. Yeah. They can adapt. They have the ability to think on their feet and make the vision come to life. Yeah. Very well I mean, said. To, to like bring it to Carmi, like for example, when we have the, all those, all the reflecting poles and they were just like in different directions and it was just literally like four of them, like in the middle of the beach, anybody would have sort of been like, what is this, right? It just sort of looked like poles, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, Carmi, when she got into it, her instinct kicked in so hard that all of a sudden for me, it felt like a shipwreck, right? And she created this sort of like new world with these poles, right? And she made it something, but that was instinctual for her to know okay, I have to now kick up this performance and you know what I mean? And, and blend in with this, or not even blend in, work with this mm -hmm. set, right? Which was just literally a bunch of poles leaning with like material flying around everywhere. But that was instinct, like she understands that, she knows that, you know? Mm -hmm. That natural interaction really exactly. just brings it to life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that, Victor. I yeah. love that, Victor. But it's so I mean, true, because sometimes yeah. you just don't, you, some people don't have it or some yeah. people just don't use it. And then it's also like having the confidence to trust those instincts yeah. instead of yeah. kind of like second guessing yourself and being like, well, you know, but. And that's the other thing. Like, I think that's really what differentiates, you know, dancers from like artists, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that trust of instinct and knowing that, yeah. you know, it's, it's okay to go harder even though you were told not to do it, do yeah. it instinctively. You should, it, there should be this beast in you that comes out. You know what I mean? And when people say beast, I think we, we refer to like how they're doing choreography or something, but there should really be like this sort of like a mind beast. Exactly. Like, like this mind beast, like this beast, sort yeah. of, exactly. This sort of like, I'm going to make this my own period and, you know, and, and just scale me back. Right. Yeah. Joanna, um, same question. Um, I think certain things that I look for um, when hiring or rehiring dancers is, you know, I, th I think talent by the, that point is already a given. Everybody's going to have the talent to be on that job. But then it also comes to, again, like we've said, being aware. You always want somebody that's paying attention because there's, there's always so many things going on, whether you're shooting a video or you're on a movie or there's, there's always so many things going around you. So for you to just be, be paying attention all the time is definitely um, necessary. Um, and then, you know, energy is a big thing too. You want to be around people that are, are going to have a positive outlook throughout the day or just carry, you know, cause they're long days most of the time and, and you don't want to have energy sucked out of you or sucked away from you. You want it to be a nice feeling. So you want to have people that are great to be around, um, somebody that's reliable and dependable. Like, you know, they're going to deliver on their performance. You know, they're going to be on time. You know, that they're going to, you know, you never want to be wondering where somebody is or if they're going to make it, if they're going to pull through with the choreo, if they're going to, you know, all that stuff. So I feel like all these things are really, um, important and I feel like a lot of times young dancers especially they feel like I'm a good dancer you know and that's just never it everybody not everybody but you know 
if you're working, you're going to be a good dancer at that point. You know, there's, there's obviously different levels, but, but it, I think it comes down to those other things, um, that are going to make you hireable and are going to keep you working. I think that this brings me to such a, a unique question for this situation. Uh, and Joanne, if you want to start with it as well, um, you know, working with the CDI dancers, a lot of what we do is we share with them what it's like to work in the real world. And do you have what it takes? What is it actually like? Is it something you actually want to do with your life and career? So how do you, as not only a creative team member, but as a faculty of CDI, how do you guide new dancers in this professional environment? You know, how do you set the bar but remain supportive and encouraging? Right. Um, well, I think one of the things that I love about CDI the most is how how encouraging and positive it is. Like the, the, the whole environment, the faculty, everybody, I don't know one person that's not that, you know? And I feel like when you lead in that way, it'll show people that it's number one, it's possible to have this type of work environment. You don't need to be screamed at. You don't need to be disrespected, you know? Um, and I think at CDI also like the students or dancers, they're really well prepared for everything that's, that might come their way, you know? So again, whether it's choreography, not only choreography, but like, you know, dealing with, um, you know, paperwork or just dealing with different personalities um, and knowing how to carry yourself, just, you know, I feel like it's, it's, I don't know, it's such a great program. <laughs> yeah, I mean, leading by example, right? So you, I show up on time. I make sure that I'm prepared for my class. I make sure that I'm, I'm, you know, answering their questions and correcting them to, you know, be better, fix things. I, I feel like the way you treat people too, and, and, um, you know, it's a big, part of it. So I think leading by example, you can't say one thing and then do something else because what kind of teacher is that, right? So I feel like mm -hmm. the best thing you can do is is show them how to be and what might come up in their careers and try to give them that information and those tools. I think uh, for me, uh, you know, um, for new dancer, even in this current environment, um, I, I would even say, especially in this current environment, I think the most important thing is to approach it as an individual, right? Um, even uh, the, like the performative quality, the the learning quality, the um, the creative quality, all of these have to be sort of individual, right? Especially now in um, in this time where you know you have TikTok and the internet and Instagram and everything, it's really, really easy to sort of be a carbon copy. Do you know what I mean? So, so I think the difference between a Carmi and you know somebody who isn't Carmi, you know what I mean? Like somebody we could have given somebody else the same thing that we did with Carmi, and I can assure you that it would not have been the same, right? Because she takes it and does Carmi with it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think leading by example is, you know, I, I personally, you know, do, I, I am that. I sort of like, if everybody's doing red, I want to do yellow. Do you know what I mean? And if everybody's doing up, I want to go down. Do you know what I mean? And like, is it always successful? No, right? But, but it is successful in the fact that I'm not going with, with the stream, right? You got you to gotta approach things in a different way. The one thing I think that, well, kind of the world that I think that we can set the bar for, for dancers is how do we interact with them? Meaning how do we talk to them? And then how do we handle our craft in the moment that they are learning or receiving? And then finally, what are we like when they see us again after they've been away from us? To me, that is the contribution to show this is what it takes to exist in this art form as opposed to um, doing it as a task. I think those are some uh, important parts as a, as a teacher or someone who is trying to encourage someone by leading by example. How do you take on being a role model? Probably poorly. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I am such a big kid, um, but I will say this. My biggest goal in life is I try to tell myself that I'm an evolving warrior. 
And that means that I am in it for the long haul, that I will be critical of myself. I will look at my weaknesses. I will look at my flaws. I'll look at things that could be better and pay love and respect to myself by trying to strengthen them. Um, I think a role model is a person that decides that they are not just on when they are in front of people. But I think being a role model is a lifestyle. It's an approach to life. It's a mindset. Um, I think also accepting the responsibility to be a role model, to say, I know that there are people that are from the path that I have chosen, the career that I've chosen, the direction I'm moving, that I am putting myself to be in front of others. And I have to accept that responsibility and honor that platform. So once you harmonize with that, I feel that everything else will fall in line because then you decide what kind of role model you want to be. Hermie, what is it like to work with young dancers? As a pop star, you've got this great opportunity as a role model. What's it like to work with really hungry, excited young dancers, possibly getting their first experience on set? Well, I think that's something really special. Um, and, and I myself once was in the same position and, and was honored to work with big artists and you learn so much from experience, right? But for me, it's always about passing it on to the next generation. I mean, they're gonna take on and take over and we all have big fill, shoes to fill, right? So it's how can we make our mark? What can we do? What can we take and learn and then put in integrate our own flair with it, you know? So um, it was incredible to work with these young dancers who are hungry and, and you know, we were sweating on the beach and dancing in the sand and trying to twirl an umbrella that kept flipping upside down. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I personally want to say that seeing you perform solo is, it's sort of like watching a masterclass and how to connect with the camera. Uh, Do you want to share maybe what you think about when you're on set, when it's just you and the lens, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't really think about exactly what I'm thinking about because it's almost like an out of body experience, but it's a connection that when you like zone in and you dial in, it's that's performance to me. It's, it's a spiritual connection. You know, you kind of like, it's your source, like where, what, whatever you're passionate about. And that's kind of, where in our purpose lies, I feel like, and people are always trying to figure out what it is. It's just like when you're connected, every step you take, that's part of your purpose. That's part of you learning, giving, receiving, like so that's all of that. So um, yeah, if I can just pass on a little bit of that to these young you know, dancers, then, then I'm a happy girl. That's beautifully said. I was gonna, th some things that I look for and really take notice when I'm on set is if dancers are paying attention to what's happening, even when they're not in a set, uh, and they're not necessarily particularly in the scene, or if they are on the scene that they're very aware and tuned in to the conversations that are happening on the side, um, because I think it's important for a dancer to be one step ahead. But I also like to see dancers who want to be there. You know what I mean? A lot of dancers, when they take their break or they're not being used, they go on their phone and they just kind of leave the environment, they leave the art, they leave the expression. So that's a big thing that's really important to me is seeing that someone wants to be there, knowing that someone is paying attention to trying to be one step ahead of everybody else so that we don't waste time and like, they already know that I'm doing that and they start to make the adjustment. The way that an individual decides to express themselves, meaning I can tell when an individual is connected to their expression and their art, as opposed to someone who is just doing what I gave them. That is really important to me because it shows that their gift is, they've, they've come in contact with the fact that their gift is bigger than they are and they are the vessel that it is flowing through. So as Carmeet was talking about, she just, what do you think about when you're doing it? I don't, I just let it flow through me. So I really pay attention to those who seem to just love what they're doing. They come to life on film. They come to life the moment they start engaging in their physical and horizontal expression of this art form. Uh, I just want to tag a little bit of what, what Carmi was saying about connection. And when I was at the other end of the camera, even though the sun was blaring, I could barely see half the time because we had so many sun flares. 
um, I really felt like she was connecting through the camera, through me. Like mm -hmm. if I was feeling something, I know Cassidy and Joanna, cause they're all pros and Victor, they were all feeling it too. She's, she's one of the rare ones that can really connect with the camera. A lot of artists just kind of get into the way they look. Carmeet connects with the camera, which makes me excited as a director because then I know we got something. So mm. every shot with her was something. It was all about connection. And that made me so proud to be part of this project. So thank you, Cassidy and CDI and everybody for bringing me in because it was, it was a trip as always. What are you most excited about in sharing this video with the world? I love creating. I love the space to work with people that I adore and I love. And this space that my sister has created for me to get to explore my vision and work with people that I respect and look up to, it's kind of special because I don't know how often that's going to happen in my life. I hope that I can always choose my team. Uh, so the thing I'm most excited about is the fact that I'm going to remember this. The releasing of this project is the celebration, but what I take home and what I live by and what becomes my new bar is that I feel very blessed with the people in my life. I feel very loved that people trust me and will go on this journey with me and will also offer themselves in this space. So I'm excited that I get to continue being an artist and I'm excited that I get to continue loving and working with my friends. Um, and I'm excited to just put something out there that doesn't just have my stamp on it, but has our stamp on it. Leaving this world with our expression, period. You know, I think that's what a legacy is about. What have you left here? And did you love it? Do you remember it? Did it, was it sweet to you? Is it imprinted on you? That's so touching. I love it. I have uh, one more question for you. It's kind of a two-parter. One, what are your hopes for this video? And two, what do you want to share with your fans as they watch questions for the first time? Oh, well, first, it was awesome to work with CDI. You guys are such an incredible group, a team, and, you know, um, educators and contributing to all these new dancers up and coming and giving them experiences like this. There's nothing else like that that I know of. And I appreciate you calling me and asking me to do it. And then it spawns me even, you know, doing something out of, out of the box for myself. Like I wasn't planning on doing questions. And then that, you know, it kind of took me to a new place. So like you said, to think of doing a song that was done by a guy, you know, I actually don't even know if I've ever released a cover Anyways, um, besides like Santa Baby <laughs> with the dolls, you know, but it's, so it was fun and, and creating a video always, it's, it's what we're all passionate about doing. Just all of that coming together and then seeing it come to fruition, it was fun. So I hope everybody enjoys it the way we enjoyed making it. Before I go, I just want to thank each and every one of you guys today for everything that you did and contributed and just being part of the team and making me feel so comfortable. And it was just a joy to work with all of you. So thank you for making this a reality. I had fun and I hope everybody else enjoyed. On behalf of the Commercial Dance Intensive and director Casey Noblet, we would like to thank you for joining us and special thanks to Carmi, Cassidy Noblet, Victor Rojas, Joanna Namada, and Brian Thomas.